Hi friends, today we will learn about closures in Go. So before we look at the implementation, first understand what a closure is. A closure is a function which returns another function. Or you can think about if you look at the function and if its return type is another function, that means it is a closure. Now why do we need that? Like a function instead of just returning int or something, why a function is returning another function? The reason is the scoping. So there is a variable which is, um, you know, scoped. So I am a function and I have some initial value of a variable. Now I want it to, uh, you know, to be used and then to be invoked or a function is basically some set of instruction. So the inner function which will be returned by me like the outer function would rely on the initial value which I give uh, it to that function and that function will work on it. So it's, you know, I know it's difficult to understand in definition, but here is something, uh, and I'll also do, uh, show you the code to explain it better. If you have a variable scoped, it's not the global variable, it's the scope which is a function has uh, inside it, and then the closure basically uses it. Uh, so let's look, this will be much more simple. So what do I have here? So I have a function which is called as int sequence, right? So this is the function definition, func, name of the function, then the return type. So return type is another function which returns an int, right? So uh, let's look here. So what we did is when I talked to you about scope, so this function initialized the i with value zero, and then it is printing and doing nothing and then it is returning. So what is it returning? So it is returning another function. So in Golang, just like JavaScript, you can do nesting of functions, like function, you can write a function within a function, like nested function, and a function can return another function, which is called as the closure. So this is the function of what this function is doing. This is incrementing the value of i. Now, where did this i come from? Where is it defined? Is it at the global level? No, it is at the outer function level. See here. So this function has a variable and the inner function is using, inner function which is inside this function is using this variable scope. So this is using the value here and then incrementing and returning. So how do we invoke? How does it look like? So first you call this function. So this function's job is to, uh, you know, initialize the value and return, print out the statement, which is doing it here. And then it would return the function to a variable. So we are storing this function, which got returned from this in this. Now, how to invoke it? So as we know that uh, there are like these braces. So once you put these braces on it, which means that you are invoking this function and this function like this, this is the anonymous function basically, right? So you named it to a variable. Now it has got a name. And when you invoke it, it will increment the variable and then it would print it. So let's run it real quick. And we can run it in the debug mode also as well. So first thing, uh, if we look in the console, uh, we started the program i's value got initialized to zero. We got the print from the outer function and outer function just returned the inner function and nothing happened. So this is technically a function. You see the func which returns an int. So when you invoke this function, so this function got returned from this guy, right? This function. And then this is returning the int. So as soon as you click it here, now the inner function is getting invoked. So this would increment the i and then print it. So this returns it here, this got printed. Now you're trying to do it again. So this got printed again. So third time, right? The inner function, as soon as this function returns the value, this got printed three. Now what we are doing is we are again invoking this uh, outer function and we are again getting the value here in this, like this variable. So what do you think? Like since we have got the third value, would it be fourth or what would happen? So let's see. 
till now in three iteration the uh, flow never reached here because this function wasn't called and whenever we were calling using this the inner function was getting called and incrementing but now as soon as we call this the outer function is getting called and then it is uh, reinitializing the value to zero so outer function did that and then the inner function is getting invoked again and this is printing out the values so this is pretty much about closures and closure is uh, a very important concept and this is basically when you need to self-sustain the uh, uh, value initialized by the outer function within our inner function in short when a function returns another function it is a closure i hope you liked it and thanks for watching if you like the video please share it